size here and sometimes you just gotta cut it. You can't let the fear get the best of you. And we're gonna pop up this lapel. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is Sunday. Um, and I am in the studio trying to crank out designs for an upcoming show. So I figured I would spend this time, a little chit chat, and you guys can watch me as I'm doing this in real time. Um, I'm gonna not try to edit as much, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Let's see, turn the camera down a little bit. All right, so hopefully the lighting is pretty good um i want to create a two piece jacket using this men's blazer and so i want a bolero style type something and then like it's long enough to be like a mini dress so i think i'm going to use my chalk first while we chit chat but i took the beginning part of the year um, I don't know if I shared this video yet. It's probably coming in one of my midweek videos, but um, I went to a vision board party. And y'all, I have to tell you, every year that I do my vision board, I do a vision board every year. And when I go back to look at it, I am amazed by the things that have actually um, come into fruition it, it's just it stuns me every year so this year and I usually keep my vision board um, pretty private so going to a vision board party is really to kind of just jumpstart me and get some inspiration um, plus I just like being around girls um, and that is also fun to me so um, this was no different. We had a great time, uh, kiki in and, you know, all of that good stuff. Um, I'm trying to think how I want this to be. I think I'm going to make this into a halter dress and then take the shoulders, sleeves and make that into the bolero. I think so. Um, so anyway, last, last year, at the beginning of the year, I think I was around maybe 3,000 followers, 3,000 subscribers, and I knew that I just needed to be a little more consistent, so I set a goal to get to 10,000 um, at some point. I, I think I was definitely under 3,000 at that point because I had quite a bit of growth last year and so um it was amazing and i was so um happy about the growth and now we're at you know over twelve thousand right now and i'm trying to do more of what you guys seem to really like but also stuff that you know giving you content that i feel really comfortable with as well that inspires me and makes me want to come back every week and and do this um and so i really want to hear from you in the comments um like what types of things you know you like to see now there's because i am a little more connected now with the chicago um fashion you know scene I'm always going to still be bringing you uh, some of that. They actually, um, we have quite a few events coming up in May and June. And I'm definitely going to bring that stuff to you. But um, I also, you know, know that you guys kind of like the upcycles. Some of you all come here to hear about my hair updates. And I... Um, just really want to get a better sense of you know what you guys want to see and hear 
I'm excited that, um, you know, I had a brand reach out to me to um, wear some of their clothes. Uh, that was the first time. And I debated and debated, but, you know, I thought it would be fun. Um, and I wanted to get that experience so that I could see if that was a direction that I wanted to go in and how it feels to be, you know, on a deadline. <laughs> and um, it wasn't so bad. Uh, I... I just found out yesterday that um, the video that I did got approved, so you'll be seeing that this week. <laughs> okay, so on this jacket, I do want it to be a halter. I don't want to have to make a whole lot of adjustments, so when I'm drawing this line, I think you guys can see that when I'm drawing this line around the collar, I need it to come um, as much as it can around the bust area so that my boobs or whoever's boobs I'm thinking I'm gonna put this in the show are covered but then I still need to leave enough so that when I cut the sleeve off that I can fold it under um, I'm either gonna fold it under or I'm gonna use I know I have some bias tape somewhere who I'm definitely gonna need that bias tape so especially with this being black I can use bias tape on here I'll look for it a little later anyway so I'm redrawing my lines because I want to make sure when this comes down, and I don't want this to be too short in there. So I may have to come a little closer here and then use the bias tape. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. Um, I may have to make some adjustments in my bolero, though. So I think what I'm going to try to do is I think I want to pin this together and cut the sides together so that they're perfectly even because it will be horrible if one of them is like that and the other one's like that. I don't want that to happen. Another brand reached out about a different product. So, um, and this was an accessory. So I went on ahead and accepted that. And so I'm feeling really good about it. And I, I got to really thank you guys for tuning in and checking me out and liking the videos, you know, and viewing them all the way to the end. And it seems like, you know, you guys are really enjoying my style. I do work in an environment that is, it's not corporate, but it is very professional. And so a lot of what you see me on Instagram with my, what I wore to work is pretty conservative. Um, now, no, I don't have to wear a suit to work every day. Um, I could wear jeans, but that's just not, you know, that's not something that I necessarily want to do. So um, I keep it, I keep it classy. I keep it professional because I never know who I'm going to run into. And I just think that that's a good way to be, you know, a good impression to leave at work. So um, that's my preference. Plus, I have a lot of professional clothing. When I worked and lived in Washington, D.C., and I worked on the Hill, and every day was a power suit, a dress, or something. And so I still have a lot of that stuff. And that's why you see me incorporating into my wardrobe semi-more relaxed than, than that. All right, so I have made my line here that I'm going to follow. And I'm just going to put this on the floor and cut around it. So I'll be right back after I cut around it. Sometimes you just got to cut it. You can't let the fear get the best of you. Um, when I first started upcycling, yes, I was always concerned about y'all is perfect. But I was always so concerned about how something was going to turn out um, and worried about just everything okay it's gonna drive me crazy if I do not find the bias tape and I call myself keeping supplies in here um, you guys see this in the background when I'm 
doing my videos. But I thought I thought I was keeping my stuff together. And it's not in here. So give me a minute. I'll be back. Um, I gotta find this bias tape because I don't want to try to turn this under. I think that too much manipulation of the fabric and I don't want to do a top stitch Ugh. I could surge it first I, I just don't want to do that I need the bias tape I'll be right back found it and this is the really the double fold bias tape so oh this is gonna be so good so good I bought this bias tape when uh, during COVID I was doing online sewing classes and I taught a ton of purse making classes online look at that y'all this is given just a beautiful finish oh I love it I love it I love it I love it so the bias tape curves so this goes around a curve very easily because cut on the bias and the bias gives you more like of a flexible um a flexible feel there so i'm gonna look who that's made by y'all see that yep vintage marshall fields look at that so i do think i didn't give them enough here in the bust area so i gotta work that out and the back we're gonna do something i'm gonna gather this in the back so that it has a little fullness back there While the camera was cooling down i attached the bias tape along the edge here all the way around around the back back up around the sides i'll bring this a little closer so you can see it it looks really really nice um around here so i think this is going to look really nice on one of my models um now what i've also done is i'm going to take the buttons off i'm going to replace and add additional buttonholes since i do want this worn as a dress this is not going to look i mean I, I just i think that the look is better um and i think they'll have a better time with the boob situation if I button it up just below the breast so that you can still see a little cleavage but the dress is closed and then if we decide to open it um, it'll still be really nice there so I have and I know most of you all who sew have the same thing too a bag of buttons okay that one looks pretty oh there's only two of them in there though I don't even know where these buttons came from. I think some of them probably were my mother's. You know, I love a good vintage button. So I am going to do my best to put some buttons on here that really reflect that. I like that they're kind of old and kind of cruddy looking. Although, I probably have enough of these. Yeah, they got to be sparkly. You know, we got to bring the sparkle. I think these are going to be perfect. I just happened to find these four really old buttons. They are so old. Don't pay attention to my nails, y'all. I'm trying to get them off. I had They looked so good the other day, and now they just look horrible. But look at these. Some of the stones might be missing, but it's kind of yellowed. I like it. I like that very vintage -y feel. I don't know what they came off of, but my mother probably, or my grandmother probably took them off of something that they were getting rid of. And um, I just think that they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. So um, I just want to show you up close the bias tape on here. You can see around the edges. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to sew on the sewing machine right on the edge all the way around. And then I was going to put elastic in the back to, you know, for this excess, but I think I'm just going to pleat it. I think it's just better if I pleat it. 
like that. Um, the bias tape actually helps give a little more coverage, a little more coverage in the boob area, so that's good too. Up underneath it. So this is nice because now she can walk down the runway with the jacket on, take the jacket off at the end, and just be like working it. This is a whole outfit. Hey guys, let's get some light in here. All right, I am back. It is about an hour or so later. <laughs> We're at the sewing machine, and I got the rest of those nails off. I got to really redo them. Um, I need to get some of the glue off and all of that, but I just found that lately it's better for me to do my own nails and not spend money on... <laughs> on getting my nails done um, I do a good job myself so I'm gonna keep doing them but I did those quick in a hurry the other night to go to an event all right so let's get into getting this trim attached or this um, double fold bias tape which I will link below attached to the bolero and I'm basically just gonna start at the back of the neck because if I have any overlap, you know, it won't show as much. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk about uh, the next, you know, going forward with my videos. And the next time that I go thrifting, not the one in Paris, which you will see probably next week. Um, I'm trying to get it done by the weekend, but with work and everything, I may not get around to finishing editing but I am going to start linking below where you can purchase the pieces I know that for a lot of you you know I've tried to give inspiration and ideas around like how to thrift and pieces to pick up but I know for some people that may not be your thing you might not you might like the look but you're not necessarily trying to go out and thrift the look some of us are some of us aren't so if I can find similar pieces or the actual piece that you could purchase either on the pre-loved market or uh, new I will link it below I've had so many people ask me about different things that I'm wearing in the video and I've got to start talking about that at the beginning um, just letting you all know where the piece is from and different things like that. I think that that just adds to it. So from now on, as I am thrifting pieces, I will let you know where you can purchase something similar. Um, now, of course, with the vintage pieces, that is much more challenging. But I'm up for the challenge, so I will be sure to include that as well look at how nice that is starting to look and then once I stitch it down that's gonna give just the perfect finish and I'll just say again I'll just reiterate you know the reason that I decided I'll turn this camera in and zoom in a little bit the reason I decided to use the bias tape is because um, sometimes when you're upcycling especially men's suits or really kind of anything too much manipulation of the fabric after you cut it can sometimes cause problems can cause fraying um, the sooner you can get that piece sewn up the better even with denim because denim frays and all kinds of things happen so but I am very simply opening it up opening the bias tape up placing the raw edge inside and put a pin in it y'all while I was away letting the camera cool off moving some things to my hard drive because my SD card got full which reminds me I need to go back on Amazon and buy some more SD cards um, I got some really good news uh, about another fashion show that <laughs> I'm so excited about you guys but it's going to keep me working 
like it is going to really keep me working from now through I would say mm, from now through uh, May <laughs> and I will share that with you soon all right so we are now at the end of the collar so what I'm gonna do is just cut a little extra like that and I am going to pin this down as close as I can to the start so pin it across so it can hold in place I think I was catching the other part in there lay this one on top since this is in the back it doesn't have to be perfect I just want it to be neat so I overlapped it by about an inch I'm gonna cut that excess off and then I'm gonna fold this under all right I'm sticking that in there I'm gonna put a pin in there like that and we are going to begin to sew I'm gonna start right at where I folded the fabric over and we're going to just stitch I'm using a two and a half to three on my Juki and I am just stitching right along the edge All right, we have finished the bolero and now we're working on the dress part. Um, I'm starting again right in the back middle of the collar and I'm going to sew around. And sewing starting in the back gives me an opportunity to cover up any flaws that I may be experiencing. Um, I think this is going to be so cute. This is looking good. One more thing I will talk about since we're just chit-chatting here. You guys are always commenting about my watches. <laughs> so <laughs> I have talked about it before, but I know that, you know, there are a lot of new folks around. So I'm going to address the watch um, perplexity. So I am a runner. I'm an avid runner. I, part of me having traveled to every continent was running a marathon on every continent. And because I'm a runner and I train for several marathons, over 20, I wear my Garmin. I still run, but not distance like that. I am now running a shorter distancing. I'm working on speed and agility more than distance and so I run like 5k's 10k's things like that but no half marathons no marathons anymore uh, but I, I run almost every day so the watch pretty much stays on my arm every day on this arm I have my Apple watch which I enjoy having my phone on my wrist so that I don't have to always look at my phone every time I get a message or an alert or something comes through. I can just look at my watch and everything is right there. That is super convenient for me. I will always wear my Apple Watch. So that's why I have those two. <laughs> now, the third is actually not a watch, although it does tell the time. It is a Fitbit and you guys probably know that many of you probably wear Fitbits and I'm wearing the Fitbit because I am in a study with Northwestern Hospital and they uh, it's a program it's a study call um, all of us and you know you can google it um, it is something that I signed up for last April and as a result of this study, I committed to wearing this Fitbit for one year. Now, once I'm done with the study, I'm not wearing the Fitbit anymore. It's too much. It has been a lot. Um, they want you to wear it at least four days a week. And if I take something off and put it down, it's probably getting lost. So for me, it was just better for me to just keep this thing on every day. And... 
I keep it on. I, I do like the information that it provides. Um, you know, it it does let me know when I've completed my steps, but I'll, also the Garmin does that. Um, and it does detect my heart rate, although the Garmin does that too. <laughs> um, and it, uh, it does indicate like change in my activity. The Garmin does that too. So, yeah, but the Garmin does so much more because this particular Garmin, the Garmin Phoenix, and I will link it below. This one is for swimming, running, and biking, cycling rather, and I am also a cyclist. <laughs> All right, so now we have finished this part. We're gonna put this on the mannequin, and we are pretty much gonna be done, you guys. I just love it. Marshall feels. All right, let's go back over to the mannequin. All right, we are back to dress our girl. All right, so in the back, we have this happening. So I gotta, gotta turn it back around again. So on the front, um, I said I was gonna button to here. So I'm going to button where it's already buttoned first. And then that's where it was also buttoned. That doesn't have to be perfect right now. I need it to be where it's going to be so that I can determine where this is going to be in the back. What I might do here, maybe I'll stitch that there and then... Bring this to here and press this down so that that lays nice and flat. And maybe I'll just stitch it. Maybe I don't have to worry about making it adjustable. It's just gonna fit whichever model it's gonna fit. And then we're gonna pop up this lapel kind of like that. Now we have the bolero so I do need to press that's how it's gonna sit I need to press that down really good I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these sleeves I feel like they need something I don't know what they need though it might be a game day decision I do think that the jacket requires I think that the whole outfit is gonna require the rhinestones because I feel like this needs something. I do think when this comes off, it's a moment. It is absolutely a moment. The turnaround, the back at the end of the runway, this whole thing is a moment. To make sure the moment has a moment, I do think that I'm gonna need to add something to give it something. And I think that something is going to be these stones. And so um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the stones on here. So that's gonna be the look. You will see this final look on the runway in the show in March. If you're gonna be in Chicago, the show is at the DuSable Museum. I will post the information below it's at the DuSable Museum the VIP opens at noon and the show starts at 2 2 30 ish um, there are right now six designers I am the final um, designer that'll be coming out I'm closing the show and I'm super excited about it uh, the fundraiser is raising money for kids to go to college and our goal is to raise $20,000 of in scholarships for students to go to college next year. So super exciting, great cause. And so far I have eight pieces out of the 20 that I wanted to have ready for that night. Now, I'm probably not going to put all 20 in the show, but at least 15 of them will go down the runway. 
I do that because on the day of a show, something in me moves me to put certain pieces in and something in me moves moves me to remove them. And instead of having the exact number and then removing pieces and not meeting the 15 piece quota, I always do a little extra. And so the day of the show, either a model doesn't show up or a model puts it on, it doesn't look right, I have to switch her out. So that's why I do a total of 20 pieces at least. Uh, not to mention that two months later I have another show that I've been invited to and so I need to have, I need to get a jump start on that basically. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is kind of a pre to the up cycle. <laughs> it's an up cycle, but kind of, you know, getting an advanced look of one of the pieces that's going to be in the show. I think once it starts to sparkle, it's going to be giving. I think with the sheer black tights and the heels and I'm going to give her a chunky handbag or a sparkly handbag something we're, we're gonna upcycle a handbag for this model um, i think it's gonna be spectacular so i hope you guys have enjoyed my ticked my i hope you guys enjoyed my chit chat um be looking out for my first brand collab um and the pieces again i will tell you guys the pieces were really good and I'm so excited about putting them in my wardrobe and wearing them on my upcoming vacation. Man, I'm really excited about that because um, we're doing lots of photos, photo shoots. I'm doing all I'm doing all the things when I get there. So uh, I will have really, you know, a mix of my thrifted items, my items from my closet that are just mostly thrifted and then my new pieces that are satisfying my craving for wanting to have some new pieces so all right you guys see you in a couple of days with that brand video and then another upcycle is coming your way um, along with a bunch of others so let me know give me some feedback on this video let me know how you felt about uh, me working on an upcycle for the show or for whatever that um, you kind of get to see it you know, in the slow process. Uh, granted, this video is over, I think it's gonna be about 40 minutes by the time I get finished, so it is a little longer, but you know, it also gives me a chance to talk to you guys and uh, show you a little step-by-step. -step. All right, you guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.